This is Thomas Midgley, described as the organism that has caused the most damage to the Earth's atmosphere. Absolutely. He uh, helped to invent lead in petrol, which brain damaged billions of people. And then he went on to develop CFCs, which destroyed the ozone layer and increased cancer rates, destroyed plants, amongst other things. The initial demonstration that he did to show how safe CFCs was, was he inhaled some and then allowed it to be blown out over some candles. And these candles extinguished. Now, what does that show? Well, it shows quite a few things. So these chlorofluorocarbons were non-toxic, it didn't kill him, denser than air, and they seem to extinguish flames. This and other properties of CFCs turned out to be excellent as a replacement for sulfur dioxide or ammonia that used to be used in air conditioning and fridges. Both of those chemicals are extremely toxic. If you inhale them, you're off to the hospital. They're terrible things. CFCs are colourless, odourless, inflammable, non-toxic. They seem perfect. Mm -mm, they weren't. And so high-energy ultraviolet rays from the sun are screened out by the ozone layer. A little bit does get through, but essentially we're protected from these high-energy rays. Mankind, photosynthetic organisms, and the base of the marine food chain, phytoplankton, amongst many other things, are protected by the ozone layer. Now, years ago when I was at college, uh, I studied environmental science. Oh, did that tree just move? Like a terrific. I studied environmental science, and it was a common belief then that deodorant caused cancer. So pretty much everyone smelled. Aerosol deodorants used to use CFCs, these chlorofluorocarbons, as did refrigeration units. So when you spray a CFC-based deodorant, for example, the CFC chemical stays in the lower atmosphere, the troposphere, the so-called troposphere. It does no chemistry, it doesn't get rained out, nothing reacts with it, it's completely inert. But as soon as it hits the ozone layer, then you've got trouble. There's enough energy around in the ozone layer from the sun that it breaks up the CFC, which then destroys the ozone layer, especially in the polar regions because it's catalyzed by ice, the destruction of ozone. So you can expect increase in cataracts, increase in skin cancer. Bob Marley, the musician, died of melanoma, and he treated it with alternative medicine, which doesn't work. If it did work, it would be called medicine. Photosynthetic organisms compromised by the ultraviolet light, and phytoplankton die. Let's zoom in and have a little look at the chemistry. Now, Ozone depletion comes up all the way through this course, so I try to stick with what you need to know for each unit. So the ozone layer protects us against high energy radiation from the sun, and the CFCs don't react until they get up to the ozone layer, where the sun's rays have such high energy that they break the bond between the carbon and the chlorine, producing a chlorine radical, it's a high energy chlorine atom which that destroys the ozone in the ozone layer. That seemed to destroy a lot. How many do you think it destroys? 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. For every chlorine radical, 100,000 ozone molecules are destroyed. So it's an international problem that needs international solutions.